Rebecca Lambert. There, there are going to be a lot of you guys here who know Rebecca. Um, you'll be well familiar with her. Um, she is a, a well-known, successful freelancer in her own right, running the Unashamedly Creative Agency, um, helping her clients to communicate more effectively with their employees and their customers. Um, she is also the founder and, dare I say, matriarch <laughs> of the Freelance Jungle. Um, which is a, a thriving Facebook group for five and a half thousand uh, freelancers across Australia and New Zealand. Um, and uh, it's a safe space uh, for freelancers to go, to ask questions, to seek support, to have a whinge about terrible clients. Um, and just somewhere that they can hang out. And, and this is a this is a special place that Rebecca and her um, co-community managers have created. Uh, and it's unlike any other freelance community that I've ever seen, and I've seen a few uh, over the last few years. And um, as that community has grown, um, it has become more complex. Um, as freelancing becomes uh, a more, uh, a, a wider career choice for more people, um, the issues have become broader, and, and one of those issues that has sprung to the top and is, is uh, talking, being talked about much more frequently uh, is that of mental health. Um, and uh, specifically in recent times, Rebecca has focused a huge amount of her time and energy on helping freelancers understand uh, what good mental health looks like, um, how they can focus more on themselves, how they can keep themselves happier, and how that helps them to uh, run more effective and efficient businesses. And so without further ado, Rebecca, welcome, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Oliver. I'm really happy to be here. Good. <laughs> uh, that's great. That's a really fantastic start. And um, so, Rebecca, Perhaps give us a, a bit of an introduction. I'm sure I've missed uh, a few things, um, but perhaps uh, you know, talk to us a little bit about your work in the jungle. You know, what, how has that changed over the last few years, and, and how has this topic of, of mental health um, come to uh, occupy such a, a central theme to everything that you do? Sure. Okay, so what happened was I started freelancing full-time in 2010 and I felt like I was making every mistake under the sun that you could possibly make. Um, and I did what any good research geek will do, which is I tried to find statistics on the challenges that freelancers were facing, couldn't find anything, spoke to all manner of people, including the ABS, who ended up saying, look, we collect the statistics but we don't do anything with it. So I launched a survey to see whether basically I was on the wrong side of the tracks or, or whether it was a collective thing. From there, what came out was, yes, the client management staff, the cash flow staff, all the rest of it. But the main core problem that everyone was facing was that sense of isolation. So that isolation meant that people were making decisions by themselves all the time, that they had no water cooler to talk to, they had no work colleagues to talk to, you couldn't debrief about the stress and all the rest of it. So I did a very simple thing. I started with getting people together in Sydney for a beer. And from there, it's expanded into having national meetups in Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide. Uh, I think we've got Perth coming on next year, Cairns, all sorts of different stuff, as well as the core group. Because there is, you know, I mean, isolation is a huge problem. We know that loneliness kills. We know that it's a statistically a bad thing for people. They're more susceptible to suicide. They're more susceptible to even physical ailments such as heart disease. So bringing people together in the freelance jungle is that opportunity to actually end that isolation and remind people that stress has a productivity cost, which is how it sort of ended up talking about mental health as well. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> uh, well, that, that makes complete sense. So, so it, do, do you see anything that, that is, is uh, you know, you've been freelancing a long time. You've probably seen a, a number of changes, both in terms of, of technology, in terms of acceptance, in terms of how you guys go about managing your businesses and all those sorts of things. Uh, what are some of the external uh, factors that tend to impact on mental health? I mean, you've mentioned isolation. Is, is there anything else? Um. First of all, I think I probably should mention at this point, I'm not a clinician or a doctor. So I'm coming from a lived experience expert 
area and I'm also studying counselling but I'm nowhere near finished my studies. So anything I say, please check with a counsellor or a GP. But I think what we need to recognise with these sorts of things is that we're in a high risk group for um, acquired mental health conditions, prolonged stress and all the rest of it because of the nature of what we do in freelance. So when they look at um, what could lead someone to suicide or what could lead someone to a breakdown or a mental health issue, they look at all of these precipitating factors and usually it's transient and unstable work. Well, hello, freelancers have that in spades. It's about having um, organisational issues where there's not enough support mechanisms. We don't have support mechanisms outside cats and dogs generally. Um, and we're also dealing with clients that may not necessarily be our best boss at any given time as well. Then you've got the financial factors. So we have poor cash flow. We have late payers, low payers. We have people trying to nobble our rates all the time and all the rest of it. Um, and then we also have the unique uh, thing of being creative people. And creative people generally have a lot higher attachment to their work than say someone that just does it for the economic reasons. So it's part of our self identity and we over invest sometimes in those sorts of situations. And even that investment is already high. So when you've got all of these factors coming into play, it puts us at greater risk of issues with our mental health. Um, and then add on the overwork that we tend to do, the fact that we're everything that is positive self-care, like you know, eating proper lunch, going and exercising, seeing friends, family and all the rest of it goes out the window in whenever a deadline happens, then we tend to put ourselves in greater risk by the actions that we take with our business and the choices that we make as well. Great answer, Beck. And um, you mentioned something before about the, um, the cost impact you know, <laughs> of, of, of mental health. And, and perhaps, you know, it might seem a little bit trite to, you know, connect, uh, you know, mental health with, with money. Um, you know, they, they might seem sort of different things. But obviously for a, for a freelancer, uh, being 100% responsible for their businesses, that, that, that direction is, is very direct. Um, so, so what are some of the, you know, do you have any stats around the, the financial impact of mental health? Yes, I do, because I'm a complete geek. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so there's a couple of stats that you might be, need to be aware of, and that is that um, the, the cost of, of work stress is estimated somewhere between 6.7 to $10.9 billion a year. So that is in lost productivity as well as extra costs that go along with it. We also know that one in five Australians take time off work due to stress-related causes, that one in two Australians will have a major mental health crisis in their lifetime, which is a shocking statistic, really, when you think about it. But also on the positive side of things, Beyond Blue and uh, the guys from PwC found that for every dollar you invest in actual positive um, looking after people in a workplace environment, you actually receive $2.67 back in productivity. So if freelancers were to apply the same sort of thing and invest in their own self-care and their own productivity in that way, we could increase what we're earning by looking after ourselves better. Thanks, Beck. That's, that's great. Now, obviously, um, there's a number of uh, different as sort of aspects to mental health and they can manifest themselves in, in different ways. Uh, you know, it might be being, you know, might be uh, sort of surfaced through being over passionate or competitive about something or, or maybe having perhaps uh, an unhealthy mentality about your relationship with the client. So what are the, some of the, uh, the mythologies around mental health and, and how, it, how it manifests itself? Sure. In freelance, one of the biggest problems that we have is we have this belief that passion will get us through. So what we tend to do when we believe too much in passion and that our ability to make the money and do the best work and all the rest of it is the only protection that we need, we tend to become very one-eyed and forget to look at the symptoms that are happening within us. So, for example, um, we expect work to be difficult. We expect to be fatigued. We expect to be tired from it. We expect to find it challenging at times. But what we don't tend to realise, because we are a company of one and because we're associating it with being a high mountain that we've got to climb, 
that we're actually showing signs of burning out, that we're actually showing signs of wearing out. And if we have that continual low-level prolonged stress, it doesn't have to be high-level, low-level prolonged stress, you can actually put yourself at risk in those sorts of things. So because we believe so much in passion getting us through, we actually believe that the punishment, the physical and the mental punishment that we have that goes along with getting to those sorts of goals is part and parcel of the job when really it might be a symptom that things aren't actually as healthy as they seem. We also ne normalise negative behaviours and coping mechanisms. Now, I'm very guilty of this. I love whiskey. I say solve it with whiskey, all of that sort of stuff all the time. But if you have a look at what the way that we speak about things, we do normalise expecting not to be paid. We do normalise wine will solve the problem. We do normalise, oh, I ate at my desk and I couldn't pee for three hours. How brave am I? So we're, we're actually affirming these things. And then the stuff that protects us, the stuff that looks after us, like going to the gym or getting some sleep or chilling at the beach or doing all of that kind of stuff, we tend to put that in the this doesn't happen unless I'm on holidays box and we push it away as being lazy and not part and parcel. So we, we focus on bravery and applauding each other for doing stuff that's actually quite harmful and I think that that creates a competitiveness in itself because we stop looking for the positive mechanisms and we cheer on the negative um, and I think also too um, the way that freelancing is built up because we're a company of one we don't recognize that we're often a part of an industry so all of the startups and all of the wonderful mechanisms that we have are all sort of stitching one little quilt patch over here and over there and all the rest of it we're all working in silos and we're all comparing against each other we're all looking at what other people are doing we don't get the whole story and then that actually brings us into hyper competitiveness we forget that our clients choose us for a variety of different reasons and that you're not exactly the same as the person next to you that means that you're not actually competing with each other you're just competing for the attention of that client but we take it so personally that we start thinking that there's something wrong with us or our business and again, because we're hyper connected to our identity, because we are little go getters, that starts to have a negative effect on how we view ourselves in the long term. And what are some of the ways, um, you know, that, that, that you could, uh, you know, perhaps recommend to help um, the people here listening uh, begin to understand how they might spot some of the warning signs of this because as you say it's normalized behavior so uh, you know for, for many people feeling stressed or uh, you know I think that there's a, uh, a growing uh, sort of thread on a lot of blogs around how you know people have normalized being busy right that's one of the things yeah. people use that as a bit of a status um, so, so how can people sort of uh, almost step away from themselves and, and say okay get to that point where I, I'm beginning to think that maybe this isn't particularly healthy. Sure. Only the best thing that anyone can ever do is to have a plan. Um, we like to think that motivation is an automatic switch that we wake up with every morning and that we're going to be going gangbusters, but it doesn't happen that way. If we don't set boundaries in our working life with ourselves and our clients, if we don't have a little plan that says, today I will go for a swim at lunchtime or today I will, you know, knock off at three so I can enjoy my children as opposed to pushing them aside and, and, and leaving it as is, then we don't tend to do it because work is this overwhelming thing that grows over the top of our timetable. So plan for it. Put Schedule time in to have those breaks. Have your lunch away from, you know, your desk. Make sure that you make time for your self-care and that you integrate it into the business that you've got. Uh, Monica Davidson from Creative Plus Business talks about having a Monday morning meeting with yourself. Get all your shit together by getting it all out there and putting it all down and having a plan, you know, um, and don't over plan. Think about the three things that you want to complete in a day, not the 300 things that you will never complete. Um, the other trick that I've found that's really helped me because I do have, as I said, I'm a lived experience mental health expert so I have a generalized anxiety disorder and I also have an OCD complex on top of that one thing that I found is that my good girl syndrome overtakes me and makes me welded to the desk until I get the task done but then I find that I'm broken afterwards so what I've actually done is instead of leaving the reward for the end of the day I start my day with play so I have an hour's worth of play and then I relax myself into the work and then the work that I don't feel like doing for whatever reason 
I can actually do better because I've allowed myself to be obligation free and to have some fun and to be creative to start the day. Find those little tricks that you can play on yourself to remind yourself that it doesn't always have to be about being in servitude to your clients. Awesome. So it sounds like as, a, as an overall theory, what you're saying is prevention is better than cure, right? So, uh, you know, the, the best way is just yeah, to, to make sure that you're being disciplined around those things. And self-care can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, right? For some, it's going for a walk, as you say, it might be going for a swim, going to the beach, whatever it is. Uh, that the, the more disciplined you are about making sure you take the time for that kind of thing, the less likely that the symptoms of uh, mental stress will surface in your life and impact your personal, professional life and that kind of thing. Yeah, correct. And, and look, the more you plan for it, the more it becomes easy to do it. So it's kind of like exercise. You know, the first time you start training for a marathon, it's probably the hardest marathon you'll ever run. But once it becomes an automatic process, you find that you don't have to bitch and moan at yourself to get the training shoes on. You actually want to go and do it. So that's what you have to remember too, is that it takes practice to kind of be a good kid. Yeah, I, I guess that's the same as anything. Um, and we've got like a, a heap of people in the room now, which is which is great, and some good people, uh, so a lot of people on Facebook. So guys, we would love to hear from you on chat or in the Q&A module. What are some of the, um, the, the stress relievers uh, that you guys use in your own lives? We'd love to be able to share that with, uh, with the room and, and with the webinar. Uh, you know, what are, the, what are some of the things that you look to to help you relax uh, and de-stress? Um, uh, well, there we go. The first one is, is um, uh, my dog, Cully, is a stress reliever, says uh, Aneta. Uh, <laughs> so I think uh, uh, it's a fairly consistent theme throughout the jungle, isn't it? There are quite a lot of uh, minkies, and we're not going to get you to explain why they're called minkies, because um, I think that's, that's <laughs> a lot but there's a lot of members of the jungle that have, have pets, yourself included. Yeah, yeah, look, I mean, that's the other thing too. I think um, be more dog is kind of like my mantra. They seem to have it all sorted out. They don't put up with stress. They know when my knockoff time is. They actually, my Labrador gets under my desk and my Great Dane pushes my chair back and they won't let me go and work anymore at four o'clock. I have to go and throw the ball. And that's really helpful, you know. <laughs> yeah, they're helping you help you, which is, uh, which is great. We've got uh, Donna who said, uh, at the beginning of the year, I made a vow. Yoga is the non-negotiable part of my week. So uh, physical exercise, I know that that's one for me uh, that uh, I find myself that I get into a, a, a sort of a negative cycle of I don't, I've, I've had a shitty day at work and it's cold, therefore I'm not going to run. And because I haven't run, I don't give myself any way of feeling better for that day or, or, or getting rid of any of the stresses or anxieties that I have. And then I start to feel less physically fit because I haven't been running and I feel worse, so I don't run. And it's sort of, you know, I guess I've, uh, I go through good times, and, good times and bad times with that in the year, but uh, that, that's definitely a, an indicator for me. Yeah, definitely. You gotta yeah. kick your own ass out the door sometimes. <laughs> I, I think um, the, the other thing um, I, I'd be keen on your, your thoughts about is, the be all and end all aspect is that, okay, I haven't achieved my uh, mental health goals this week, therefore that's it and everything goes out of the window. Uh, the, uh, do, do you have any ideas about, you know, about that or about how you can, I guess, be a little bit um, uh, easier on yourself if you don't happen to be one, if you don't make your goal every time, all the time? Yeah, any kind of goal is about encouraging you to do the best thing that you can do. And um, there's a psychologist called Richard Hill who talks about what you're doing right at that moment is the best that you can do. You know, we've set up the world to say that your best isn't good enough on a regular basis, which is crap. So if you can actually tap into the fact that right now you are doing the right things for you and not focus on everything I haven't done, focus on the accomplishment that you have. So there's a couple of little tricks that you can do with that. First of all, every day, just pick up your journal and write three things you did well that day. Even if it's a crap day and you've, you've only sorted out all the emails or you've put out a lot of fires, these are still achievements. Um, even if you've had a really bad mental health day and the only thing that you've managed to do is eat your lunch and go and have a shower, then these are still positive things because it's better than, you know, just being there and not, not being able to exist at all. I think also too, we have a focus on our to-do list. 
we have a focus on everything that we need to accomplish. We need to stop and take pause. When we finish a project, we need to reflect on the fact that we've just built something really cool. When we've finished a week, we need to have a done list that says, hey, you've done a lot of stuff this week. Isn't that amazing? Um, I have a little jar that I have that I sit on my desk and I write little post-it notes to myself through the year and then on just January 1st, I open them all up and I read them and they're the challenges and they're the negative thoughts and they're the positive thoughts and they're the hard moments that remind me that I've actually made progress. And it's interesting to look back in the rear vision mirror and see all of the stuff that we look at right at that particular point in time seems like it's very stressful and it's very important, but most of it is just one big part of a, a longer journey. And that's what we need to remember. It's about having that perspective. And we're getting some great stuff coming through. Um, Holly Shoebridge, who's uh, uh, well known in the jungle, said that she loves to start her day with a play and she sets little rewards uh, throughout the day for herself rather than just a single carrot at the, you know, uh, and that helps keep her smiling. Uh, we've got Jessica, also a jungle member, uh, who says her freelance jungle uh, check ins help to de stress. Sometimes I get help, sometimes I give it, and it all makes me feel better. So, all, all different things and people. Uh, going going for walks, so so a really great um, uh, load of comments and uh, and enthusiastic uh, participation from from the audience there. And guys, if you've got any questions, uh, you know, again, please do feel free to put them in the, the Zoom room chat or in the Facebook feed. We are monitoring both. So sometimes, I guess, despite your best attempts, it, you might get to a point where you need some help. Yeah. Um, Again, horses for courses, there's going to be different people that will benefit from different kinds of help, some more formal, some less formal. Can you give us some advice um, uh, and perhaps maybe talk about some resources uh, that, that people will, uh, you know, that people can go to, can look to uh, in order to help them with their, you know, with their ongoing mental health and, and just to, to stay, uh, you know, just to, to keep that sort of positive um, uh, outlook on life? Sure. I think the thing is, um try and do it before you feel like you have to do it. So if you're finding that you're under stress or whatever, look for the resources before it actually becomes mission critical and you're on the floor eating butter by the fistful, wondering where your life's gone. So if you're feeling like there's mental health or there's stress that's kicking your butt, get to a GP. GPs can be the first line of contact for a variety of different resources. You can also call Lifeline, which is 13 11 14. They don't just do crisis and suicide. They have a big Mac Daddy Fly database where they can tap you into all kinds of support groups and resources and all those sorts of things that match what your particular circumstances are. I think also too, um, it's important to stay close to positive people. So if you've got a lot of freelance buddies that really build you up and help you out with your stuff and all the rest of it don't be afraid to share your stories in business we often try to act a lot braver than we are and I think it's really important that we're actually just real with people and let them know what's going on in our situation excuse me um, and also there's a cracking book by um, Alice Moyle, which is called the Anxiety Toolkit. It's only very small. Um, it's specific for people that are, have got anxiety, but it can also be applied to stress. And that actually helps you work through some of the processes that you're going through, some of the choices that you make, some of the thoughts that you're having that are negative and, and that are disrupting you. The freelance jungle is always there for that first line of conversation and we try to tap you into the resources as well. Um, and <laughs> I'm also, here's that plug thing happening, but I've also spent the last few months writing a book and a course called How to Keep Working When You're Dying on the Inside, which is specific about when you're freelancing and you're getting stressed and all the rest of it, how to keep going. It's also about burnout, but it's also about when you're a freelancer and you get to that point in your career and you've, you're looking after your clients and you can do it really well and then all of a sudden you realise you can't do what normal people do in their jobs, which is go and get a promotion or go start working somewhere else or take a leadership role. It's also how to sort of set yourself up and create space so that you can transition your business to being where it needs to be and to be able to grow with it because one of the impediments to success freelancers often have and the reason why we often find ourselves burning out is because we get stuck doing the same old stuff and we lose our ability to challenge ourselves. So I've kind of built that to help people transition as well. That's great. And, and just because just you needed something else to do, you know, <laughs> that you do, right? 
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know, it's 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 just a labour of love. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and when's that? When when are you expecting that to uh, to come out? It's going to. I've checked with my proofreader, and it's going to her this week. And so I'm looking at maybe end of January, Feb, so that we can kind of have a nice little love in February St. Oh. Valentine's launch because I do love my St. Valentine's cheesy marketing launches. Okay, do. So guys, with um, with the question of resources, uh, website, uh, you know, links and, and numbers, and also uh, any interest in, in, uh, in Beck's book, um, as you know, for those of you who are on the, uh, who've registered for the Zoom webinar, I will follow up with the recording, of course, this is being recorded, um, and uh, in that email I will add some of the links to uh, Lifeline, some of the numbers that, that Beck provided, and also I think she's going to give us a, a registration link, uh, for sort of um, uh, a mailing list or, a, or, a, or an interest list, so that uh, if you are interested in information, uh, around when book, Beck's book is being launched or maybe the uh, uh, an early opportunity to uh, to put your hand up to, to purchase a copy um, or to go to the signing in Wollongong, <laughs> uh, then, then uh, Beck will follow up with some uh, some information and an opportunity to uh, to do that. So, so that's great. Um, fantastic. Well, Beck, I think, um, you know, it, it's, uh, I think we've sort of come to the end of the questions that... Um, uh, that we had the more formal thing um, and there's a lot of congratulations coming through the channel on your book thank you Annetta and uh, thanks everybody for, uh, for being a part of it at the moment there don't seem to be any questions I don't know whether you've prompted inspection in the zoom room uh, but again I will throw out that, that, that Rebecca is happy to uh, to answer any questions that you guys have, whether you're on the uh, on the Facebook link and or whether you're in the Zoom room, but we're getting a, a lot of people that are saying they can't wait to, wait to read the book. Um, and uh, we have a question from Brooke. Uh -huh. We would like to ask you, how do you manage your many projects all at once? <laughs> um, time boxing. I know that's not exactly the most sexy answer in the whole entire world, but I plan everything out. Um, I surround myself with um, supports that I can delegate stuff out to, and such as my admin team or my partner who does sound for events and all that sort of stuff. But it's also just about having planning and processing and knowing what you want. I think when we're in freelancing, we often forget that um, when we're doing the work, we lose the purpose behind the work. We lose the connection with what we want to get out of it. But if you can maintain that, you always know how to say yes and no to the opportunities that might not work for you and to always find the focus that you can find, um, you know, to do the things that you need to do because you can see why it makes sense and you can see how it sort of maps into the world that you want to create with the work that you're leaving. Um, I have this really weird idea that everyone is driven to create which is why we create children or we create houses and we create legacies. And I think we create our businesses as well. We're, we're trying to leave little footprints in the sand of life. So if you stay connected to what those footprints mean to you, you can find the energy to do the things that you need to do when it matters most to you. It's when we've kind of started walking in someone else's footprints that it's harder to connect with that. Yeah, awesome. Uh, we've actually got Donna who said she wants to write an article about this and can she PM you for a couple of quotes? So uh, we, can maybe <laughs> take, we can take that offline and maybe if you're interested, but Rebecca, I can put you uh, in touch with, uh, with Donna. I'm assuming she doesn't want quotes from me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and Brooke asked a follow-up question. Um, do you have a process to tap back into your personal commitment to each project? Um. I think that that's an ongoing thing, to be honest. I mean, I kind of try to just stay really close to what I do. I'm looking up at a giant post-it note that has post-its hanging off at card wall style in, in agile format that reminds me what I must, should, could and would do in any different scenario. Um, but it's, it's just about knowing exactly what I want to get out of the situation and also what other people need to get out of the situation. I think that that's the two things that we often forget. We need to realise that the work that we do, we need self-satisfaction out of it because that's what keeps us connected to it. If it doesn't 
if, if it doesn't give us a sense of accomplishment and we're not satisfied by the work, it's very easy to start being stressed by work. It's very easy to start procrastinating and, and avoiding it and all the rest of it because we simply don't feel like we're getting what we need out of spending all of that time. Um, and I think also, too, thinking about what other people get out of it stops us from just being individually driven. So looking at the status or looking at the money or looking at our own personal stuff and start realising that, you know, everything that we create that's out there is so that someone else can benefit from it. And if we can connect with that benefit, then it helps us come back to ourselves and look after ourselves as well. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> I think... Um, you know, I, I personally, this has been um, amazingly eye-opening. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of things that you have given me food for thought, just in terms of perhaps um, opening up in my mind some of the stuff that maybe I knew deep down that I should probably think more about, um, especially at this time of year when we're spending, you know, a bit more time with family, uh, you know, um, and that can also be stressful in itself, maybe some time for some self-reflection. Uh, and things like that before girding ourselves for a, for a huge 2020. So um, on behalf of everybody who's attended today, I'd just like to thank you for taking the time for, uh, for sharing uh, some of your uh, expertise and insight and, and uh, uh, time with us. It's been wonderfully well received and uh, I'd like to wish you and, and uh, you, know, all, uh, you know, all of your freelance uh, jungle community the best for the holiday period. And I know that we'll be uh, hopefully doing some more great stuff with you in 2020. Great. Thanks so much for having me, Ollie. I mean that sincerely. It's been awesome. a pleasure. And for everybody else, thank you all for, for giving your time, for joining us. This is the, uh, the last uh, webinar, but fear not, we will be coming back in, in 2020. We've got uh, Lindy Alexander already lined up for those of you who are journalists and writers. We've got Monica Davidson already lined up for those of you who are um, creatives um, and we'll be looking to, to uh, really uh, dig deep into some of the topics that are, uh, are important to you. Uh, if you have any um, uh, desires or recommendations uh, for people that we should talk to, interesting people who you think would uh, uh, sit nicely and comfortably under the title of freelance legend, uh, <laughs> we would love to hear from you because, again, you know, th this, is, uh, this is about uh, a forum for those people to, uh, to share their expertise with us. So on that note, on behalf of everybody at Rounded as well, I would like to wish you all a happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, whatever it is. Uh, we'll see you all in Festivus, of course, yeah, and we'll see you all in, in 2020. Cheers, everybody, and we'll see you soon.